In this code demonstration, we're going to take a look at some more interesting array manipulation functions provided by underscore JS. Now, to make use of underscore, we either have to download the underscore JS file into our web project and reference it from there, or as I've done here in my demonstration, we can reference it from a CDN. Okay, so the first one I want to take a look at is zip. Now, zip is kind of interesting. Basically, it's going to merge together the values of multiple arrays. And so the best way to kind of understand what this thing is doing is to actually kind of see it in action. So we're going to create a new variable here called var z. And we're going to call the underscore zip function. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pass into it several different arrays. So I'm going to create one array here. We'll give it a 1. We'll say John. And we'll give John a last name here. And that'll be our first array. Then our second array, we'll give it a number two, and we'll say Alice, and then we'll say Taylor. So we have Alice Taylor. Then we're going to do a third array here, and we're going to say Bob, and then we'll say Davis. So now we have Bob Davis. And then finally, we'll do a third one here called John, and we'll do John Doe. And we have to make sure we give a number four here to him. OK, so we have our four arrays. And we're going to go ahead and have our closing parentheses for our zip function. And we'll simply do console.log z. Now we'll flip over to our web browser. And we'll reload our page. And let's take a look at the result here. All right, so we now have this array with three um, elements in it, and in each of those elements is another array. So if we expand this out and we look at the first array, we're going to see that we have one, two, three, and four. If we come look at the second array, we're going to see that we have John, Alice, Bob, and John. And then finally, we take a look at the second array, and we're going to see we have Smith, Taylor, Davis, and Doe. So basically what zip has done is it's taken each element and basically built an array based upon its index in its original array. So we have an array of 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then we have an array of John, Alice, Bob, and John. And then finally we have an array of Smith, Taylor, Davis, and Doe. Okay. Now, what I find pretty interesting about the zip function is I can actually combine this with the unique function and take a look at this. Come in here and say underscore unique. And then I'm going to reference the second element of this array, which is at index 1. I'm going to save that, jump back over to my web browser, and reload and take a look at this. I now have a unique list of values here. In this case, happens to be the first name, but a unique list of values based upon this data here. So you can see that kind of combining these operations can, can generate some very interesting results that can actually be quite useful in your application. So the next function we want to take a look at is the object function. And basically, this function will convert arrays into objects. So we can call it with a couple of different um, uh, parameter types and get slightly different results. So let's create an O variable here, let's say underscore dot object. Now, the first way we're going to do this is we're going to pass in two separate arrays. Okay, And what it's going to do is it's going to take each item in the array. And basically, the first array's item is going to be the object property. And the second array item is going to be the is going to be the value of that property. So we'll do something along these lines. We'll say ID, first name, last name, and then we'll pass a second array. And we'll say 1, Bob, Smith. And we'll save that. And then we'll do console.log. So now we'll switch back to our web browser. We'll reload our page. Take a look. We have an object here with an ID of 1. First name is Bob, and last name is Smith. So that's kind of interesting how you can take that list of properties and then basically 
pair it with a list of values, and then generate an object from it. Now there's another way we can also do this. It's a little bit, little bit more tricky syntax here just because we're going to be dealing with nested arrays. But we can also do something along these lines. I'm going to set this up so that I have a new array here with ID. And then I'm going to set ID up to be the first element and then one to be the second element. Then I'm going to do another array. First name will be the first element. Bob will be the second element. And then finally, we'll set up a third array here with last name. First element is last name, and the second element will be Smith. So now we have our object method call. And what's going to happen is this is going to be turned into the exact same object that we saw in the previous example. So now I'm going to save that, come to my web browser and reload. And now you see we get exactly the same object that we had before. So just two different ways of making use of that object function. So now the very last function we want to take a look at is the range function. Now the range function is really handy because you can use it to basically generate a list of numbers very quickly. So for example, I'll do console.log here. Simply call underscore dot range. And I can pass into it the number 20. And now if I go to my web browser, and I reload this, you'll see that I now have a list starting at zero, going all the way to 19, representing an array with a list of 20 numbers in it. Okay. I can also specify a start value if I want. So if I come in here and say one comma 20, and I come back to my web browser and I reload this, you'll see that it starts here from one and goes all the way up to 19. But notice it's stopping at the 20th element. It's not going beyond that, even though it's starting here at, the, at 1 instead of 0. And then finally, we can do something like this. Making sure that we specify that first parameter, we can come in here and actually specify a third parameter, which will represent a step value. So now if I reload this page, you'll see that I go 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, so on and so forth, um, all the way up to the 20th index, which in this case is 19 so it's not displayed on the screen. So as you can see, this range function is very useful if you want to create basically an array of numbers uh, very easily. So in this demonstration, we took a look at the zip function, the object function, and the range function. Underscore is an excellent, excellent library that can help you out a lot with, with, with managing your arrays.